It's a time. It's package from China time. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a close look at the D007. Yep, it's a new handheld from China, from a new brand, and I have no idea what the brand actually is. Maybe I need to translate this, but it's just called Game Console with a 640 by 480. They are having a couple of these devices, and they clearly want to, like, say, showcase like, hey, we have this resolution. But what you're having is always the question, simply because when you're looking at the fancy boxes with a lot of cool information on it and a lot of plastic, plastic fantastic. <laughs> but one of the things I'm really looking forward to is how it actually will look and how will the overall experience be. Because that is always the mix, or basically the gamble with these devices. Oh man, so so first of all, when you're looking at the bezel already, oh, this thing is absolutely huge. Let's give you a different look, and that is always a little bit of a bummer by my opinion. And another thing you see a lot with these devices, that we're having a very cheap front glass, or very thin material at least. Alright, so let's remove this, this piece of plastic and by pressing it you can maybe see it in the camera it's bending fairly easy so need to be very careful careful with that because it's going to be absolutely scratch sensitive the form factor i must say that i was quite surprised seeing this at first on the picture because i knew already it's going to be absolutely great so and i mean particularly looking at the back part over here the round shapes will give you absolutely way better comfortability than your typical handheld so one of the configurations I love. The product parameters. A 3.5 inch display with a resolution by 640 by 480 and then has an IPS. So that's kind of cool. So it's going to be absolutely a fantastic experience. The rock chip is the 3326 running on 1.4 gigahertz with a Mali G31 MP2. This configuration we have seen it in Android boxes. The RAM is only one Gigabyte. Oh, wait, sorry, is this, oh yeah, it's, that's really, really confusing. I'm guessing, they, no, no, it's, there's one gigabyte of RAM and eight gigabyte of memory. Then we're having open source Linux system, I'm guessing Emielic or something like that. And then we're having a dual 3D stereo rocker, yeah. Rock your world. Mm. The D-pad is finally on the right place, especially when you play some old school games. And how it feels, I can tell you, it's absolutely not bad at all. Where it has a slight angle to it, the travel it's quite long, but not to a point that it's going to be annoying. And also in combination, when you're just moving around, it feels nice. It doesn't have the cheap click to it, and the resistance it's okay. I would love to see it a little bit, must say, more like or less of a or less of a travel and less of a resistance. But I'm very curious about this, how it actually plays. It's kind of cool that they implemented two joysticks at the bottom, and in my opinion, this is one of the best configurations. The joysticks have a very nice feature with some LEDs around them. When you're just going to be pressing them, they will light up. That's kind of cool. I love it. And what is even more of a surprise, the ABXY are just huge buttons. And the touch itself is also very pleasant. They have an absolutely great travel. Have a little bit of a wiggle to it, not a bad thing, and it has like a very nice round shape on top, so that makes it very comfortable to play. At the back, where we'll find the speaker itself, and the speaker I have been setting it to maximum volume, and it sounds not bad at all. Last but not least, we're going to get three function buttons in the middle. Left side, we're going to get the on and off switch. So let's turn on and the reset. And the display indeed is a 3.5 inch, but it also comes with a very nice overall, let's say, viewing angle. It's great. At the right side, we're finding the micro SD card and the volume control. And on top, nothing at all. Because all of the ports are at the bottom, we're going to get ourselves an OTG port. Then we're going to have the headphone, the jack. <laughs> And of course, a DC input and all type C. It takes quite a long time to actually boot up, but it will not boot up in your typical Emmy Alex software. No, not at all. But it looks similar. 
In the main menu, here we find all kinds of different emulators. Sony Place 4 and the 64. I will mainly focus on, like I said, a high-end system just to see how it actually runs. But I kind of can tell you, the old school stuff runs just fine on the device like this with a rock chip. But the overall menu, this is made for people who don't want to tinker and mess around with all kinds of settings. For example, pressing start, here we're having the language, battery 95%, volume control. You can also change the volume here, of course, at the side and it showcases how it will look because in the backend it runs on Android. Brightness can be adjusted over here and I can tell you it is really bright. And then we're having the date key settings. Oh crap, oh. I completely messed that part up. Let's go back again. What I wanted to say is key settings and here you can basically check it all out. And what's kind of cool, you can just see it now that the light up feature of the both joysticks will light up actually when you're using them. That's kind of cool. But you can check all of the buttons if you want to. It's got this very annoying tune to it. Another thing I do notice, and that is kind of cool to mention. So when you're checking out the back buttons, they are all micro switched. And the micro switch is not a bad thing, don't get me wrong. But the way how they implemented the buttons, you can see it when trying to record it. There is a slightly different angle and that is convenient. So if you're going to be holding it... Oh, don't get me wrong, I still hate it because it's quite difficult. So the R2 and the L2 are very, let's say, easy to touch and to navigate to. But if you want to press the L and the R... Because it's basically on the middle part of your finger, you want to make this movement. It is possible, but you need to force your hands in certain ways. So I am not a big fan of these back buttons, but yeah. But they, there's almost no way to put more buttons on here or have a six button configuration, make it wider and put just two at the back because the R2 and L2 with my fingertips can be touched fairly easy. Another option we don't see with every single device. Oh crap, that's not what I wanted to say. Pressing the Y button. Here we do have an option to search. Uh, by the way, I have no idea how to get rid of that sound at the moment. moment. Alright, so let's choose Sonic. Choose for the game. And here we will find all of the games. And some have even a short video. That's kind of cool to be honest. It's a very short video sometimes, like a couple of seconds. Here we're having Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Yeah, that's the only thing that it does. But also the source function works pretty damn well. So the overall, let's say overall performance of this, it's kind of cool. So let's see if we're going to booting up the game. And let's take a close look at, let's say, the menu. Some of the games need a couple of seconds to loading and decrypting, but that's it. But pressing the escape button in the middle over here will bring you to this special menu where we can make a quick load, quick save. There is no screenshot, let's say, showing you what kind of party and game you were. So a little bit of a bummer. And here we have like a quick load, quick save. And we can mess around with the joystick keys if you want to. There is only one thing I find quite annoying when it comes to the display itself. This thing has a shitload of back bleeding or there is something wrong with my LCD. Because here you can see in the middle, it does have a problem. Okay, so first off, let's try some MAME. Where I'm not going to be surprised that it actually runs great. And that's because... These rock chip devices can be used without any problem. Which does old school stuff. The D-pad, I'm quite surprised. It works very well. Let's move to the analog stick. Next up, let's some 8 bit this is a game that I've played so much as a child. It's so much fun. And how many different like Bombermans we're having nowadays is absolutely crazy. And I can't get enough of Bomberman. Okay, move on to the Super NES. Okay, I lowered the audio because it may be easier with recording, but let's crank it all the way up. The downside is, if you want to have a different resolution with some emulators, there is no way of getting into the filter options and etc. Of course, with a resolution of 640x480, it's not going to be an out of a big deal in my opinion. But still, if you want to have different filters, 
There was no way getting into the option itself. Nope, there's nothing of a combination. The only thing that works is pressing escape. And that's the thing which you're going to see with this particular piece of software. So when it comes to N64, these devices are not great at all in my opinion. Yep, they will run a couple of games. But you can already see from the interno, it's going to be absolutely a mixed overall shenanigans. I'm not getting even into the freaking game, it's already stuttering like crazy. So with N64 we're not there yet. It's interesting to see that we're having budget devices now with N64, where back in the day we had quite expensive devices that only had the option to run it, but that's cool. Let's get into the gameplay. And take note, if you're going to get more demand game, F-Zero, GoldenEye, those games will not run at all. We're having like 5 FPS per second. Getting into the game, we have a slightly overall better performance. In my opinion, still playable. But there is nothing we can do when it comes to also configuration over here. Next up, let's get into the Mega Drive part. But that sounds kind of messed up in my opinion. Let's move on into the gameplay. And let's see if we're going to have better performance there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do have the feeling that they are running on a PAL game system. Ah, okay, where is my jump button? It's not there. Oh, they moved it to the back buttons. Oh, that's quite annoying, to be honest. Let's see if we can change that out. Um, ah, here we go. Yeah, if you want to, you can change it out. Yeah, we're not going to do that here. Everything A would need to be A, B, X, Y, L, and R. Okay, that's correct. Yeah, we're going to change it out like this. Let's see if this is going to be working better. It doesn't do anything. No. I just wanted to see what happens. Yeah, we can mess around with it, pressing the R1 to the other button. But you can mess around with it if you want to. Let's move into the PlayStation now, because I'm really curious if we do have overall good performance. Take note that this is just running on native resolution and there is no upscaling option even possible. Alright, so the next thing I need to do is lower my... Yep, that's lower my studio lights, so we're going to get a little bit better visual. I must say that I find really annoyed by the back bleeding over here. In my opinion, there is always something that you just need to mess up, and even as a quality issue, it's such a bummer because when it comes to the overall performance of the system, I'm quite surprised. I'm getting my ass kicked by me now. What's going on here? Oh. And they love to add PlayStation Portable to these devices, and there's also no option. So far, I can see getting into the PPSSPM later. So far, so good. It does look slightly different than your normal PlayStation Portable because the, the resolution and the screen size is not the same. That's the reason why we're going to get black bars on top and bottom. But I can tell you this product like this is not 100% compatible with PlayStation Portable. But we do got some good performance with Tekken 5. I'm having a day of getting my ass kicked. That's one thing to be sure. So what is interesting with the Game Boy, they implemented a filter. I can just see it is less pixelated. And I must say that is not, not a bad thing. It does look kind of nice, but that is something of course personal. And also the same with Crash Bandicoot and GBA, we're having the same blurry art filter over it. 
I think it's not really necessary when it comes to Game Boy Advance because those games look absolutely amazing on a tiny display like this. Can we crank it up the volume? But so far so good. But I wanted to also check out the D-pad quality. And I can tell you this game looks really great on this display. Yeah, absolutely great. So the D-pad not also feels great for shooting games and fighting games. It's great when it comes to fighting games. So let's see if we can do the super move. Yep. Absolutely great. So when it comes to the overall performance for the D-pad and the fighting, this is just a great combination. The construction of this device when it comes for opening up is slightly different. With the other models from the same brand has the option just to remove the parkers and just open it up. This thing is clicked together to a certain point. The top part is open, so that's not going to be any problem whatsoever. But okay, so it's absolutely one nasty situation where the other ones were very easy to open up. So we need some prior tools. Also, I don't know what's going on with the screws itself, but they don't want to get out of the freaking plastic. So what you need to do with this particular model, be very careful, get the right prior tools so we can remove these pieces of plastic. They are very hard plastic, so they can break fairly easy where the outer shell of this thing is made out of very flex flexible plastic. Okay, so the holes are quite deep, so we need to stick in the other screwdriver because the other... Oh man, yeah, I need to find the right screwdriver for this. My, or is my tool? No, it's possible. No, no, no. I need to pry a little bit more. We need to just jank this thing in. There we go. Screw number number five, and then we're going to have screw number six. Oh boy, I can tell you, it's a tight one. But we're going to get it out. All right. And then we're going to be very careful opening it up. So I'll give you a look in the inside. Oh man. So it's going to be absolutely shenanigans opening this thing up. There we go. So one of the positive things about this particular product that we do have, do we have like rip removable plugs. So I'm very happy with this. Okay, next up, can we remove the battery or is this glued to the system? No, it's basically glued in the inside over here, double-sided tape, I'm guessing. I'm not going to be prying or messing around with it, but that's one of the reasons that they also give this thing some, say, different kind of size measurements. So where this thing is very comfortable to hold, do of these very nice grips at the back. It is all, of course, in great position to get a very big, or big, to get at least a decent lithium battery. Lethal battery. But always be very careful with these things. If you need to replace them, you need to check on AliExpress. There is a code on these batteries with how many amps and what kind of connection. And of course, these are a couple of different plugs over there, but you can just order them and replace them. And the speaker is going to be slightly difficult, I think, to find, but also this can be replaced. In here, we're going to find the Rock Chip, the Rock Chip RK3326. And at the back, we're going to get micro switches because the pieces of plastic are directly attached to the micro switches there's nothing between it but that's basically how what we're going to have in the inside now here it is interesting so this thing is also called the yx08 game this version 2 no, it's for i think it's that's version 2.1 this is production day 2023 06 so this is the details we can replace the lcd if this thing is broken or whatsoever but you know we have an, not a great overall LCD in this thing because we do have some back bleeding. I don't know if there's a problem too of the LED is in here and just bleed out through the display. There's just a general problem at all. So that is of course a question, but it's also kind of cool. So the, both of the joysticks, I think they can also be replaced. You have the connections over here. So if you need to do some maintenance, it's not going to be too hard, but it is quite difficult to open up. That is one thing to be sure about. Because that is absolutely an absolutely a horrible nightmare. The D007 Plus Edition. It's kind of interesting piece of tech, if you may ask me. Runs on Android, has a very nice interface. 
has a lot of games that we can actually play with this with this rock chip but when you're looking at the competition there are way better options out there thank you all for watching consider subscribing let me know what you think of the d007 and it would be great to see you in the next video mm.